Welcome to the Goddess Conference Conversations. In this space, we will connect with interesting personalities, presenters and artists from our international community and chat about the upcoming conferences, topics and themes. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Goddess Conference Conversations. I am here, I'm very thrilled. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Laura Murphy, who is with us from Ireland. And I'm very thrilled because I think she is as much a lover of Bridget <laughs> as I am all things Bridget, I always say. Um, I can see a Bridget Cross in her room and uh, pictures. And I know there's a, there's a statue in front of her that is behind me. So there's a lot of things we have in common. But except for your love for Bridget, I would like to ask you, Laura, to uh, maybe give a little introduction of who you are. Yes, uh, thank you for having me here, Marion. It's an absolute honor. And I was first introduced to you and your work in the documentary that we were in uh, last year. And it's like just then to be invited to join you in this magical conference is really an honor and a dream come true. So thank you for, for having me. Um, well, I'm a mother. But first and foremost, I'm a mother of a little six year old boy Um, I'm a poet, an activist and a writer and a healer. So those uh, those titles are relatively new Um, I've always been a poet, but never assumed the title until uh, I went on a, a Bridget's pilgrimage in 2013, which is where a lot of magic happened that over the course of the next 10 years then really uh, facilitated my coming onto my path into what's called my dawn in the Irish language, which is your, your soul gift or your purpose in life. And before that, I was a, a communication strategist in the corporate world for 20 years. So, yeah, um, but as Steve Jobs said, we can join the dots looking backwards and those 20 years uh, were essential. Now I can see, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, how essential that those years in the corporate world, learning how to develop strategy, learning how to communicate with the wider audiences, really facilitates my sole purpose, which uh, is to really expound the message and the energy of Bridget and the goddess and the ancient wisdom tradition of Ireland. So that's a, a whistle stop tour. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And it's interesting, isn't it? How, how your past kind of flows into what you're doing now and that's the same with me as well so yeah it's it's very really beautiful so can you uh, I, I just want to know for myself really <laughs> can you tell a little bit more about it? because you say you went on the pilgrimage which is this beautiful pilgrimage I, I don't know if it still happens every year um it's a two pill there I think is it from folk art all the way from folk art yeah from folk art which is is said to be the place where the saint Bridget was born it's in a direct straight line through many miles in through many counties through Kildare. So the place where St. Bridget ended up setting up her monastery and where she would have have died eventually. But the route is um, it's a straight line and along the way it has uh, sacred sites. So these sacred sites actually were found to be in, in a direct alignment, mm. which kind of defies science. You know, if these sacred sites were on our these lands for thousands of years, how did our ancestors have the technology to be able to plot these sites in such a direct alignment? But however they are, and there's uh, the Hill of Slain, um, it, it's an incredible the hill of slain actually is quite pertinent to glastonbury so anyway before i talk about that <laughs> the i know we could go all the way <laughs> yeah. but i'll definitely come back to that because it's so relevant to ah. slain and glastonbury tor are like sister sacred sites so wow. we'll come back i to never that. knew that that's interesting yeah, yeah it's 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 there's and there's so much yet to be discovered but anyway so so this is an ancient pilgrim route that was actually forgotten about um, until 2013, until a friend of mine 
Anthony Murphy. He's an astronomer and a mythologist. Um, Mythical Ireland is his website. It's worth going on. Yeah, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and his uh, friend, artist Richard Moore, discovered that this was indeed an ancient sacred site and a, a site dedicated to the goddess Bridget and dedicated to the Saint Bridget that connects many sacred sites, including the Hill of Slain. And it's very near the River Boyne, which is uh, the river connected to the goddess Bowen, who is a cow goddess and who could also be considered the mother of Bridget because it's not named who Bridget's mother is. Mm -hmm. There's two possibilities, um, but Bowen, Bowen could be one. So Bridget's Way and the Hill of Slain are all around uh, the River Boyne and then the Hill of Tara, Newgrange are all sacred sites that you'd know about and that are connected to uh, this uh, pilgrim route. So in 2013 then, um, two amazing women on these lands of Ireland, Dolores uh, Whelan and Karen Ward, they actually revived this pilgrim. So the route hadn't been walked in thousands of years. So they organized this pilgrim route then. Um, and I was one of the lucky ones who, who was able to walk on that route. So I was joined by an amazing group of largely women from Australia and America, like the Irish diaspora all came back. <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. And we we all had this shared sense of the the significance of what was happening. Mm. Because in Ireland when we won our freedom from the British Empire, so we were colonized for eight hundred years and as soon as we won our independence, uh, we actually gave our power away again to another uh, external force, which was the Catholic Church. And then for the next 100 years, we were very oppressed as a people through the shame and the fear and the dogma of the Catholic Church, but most specifically around the suppression of the feminine and the suppression of our ancient ways. They forcibly removed uh, the, you know, our, our ancient traditions, which was God, goddess worship. So while they forci so forcibly removed it, it's never been forgotten. It's an ember has always managed to be set alight. So we all in our DNA, in our hearts, we felt the significance of this walking the path, the footsteps of Bridget. And Bridget was a beloved goddess and archetype in Ireland as far back as our like the first peoples, you know, in, in her goddess form. And she never there were so many things that ended up to be eradicated, but they, the Catholic Church just couldn't erase Bridget. No. So they had, to, they had to incorporate her. Uh, you know, some people say appropriate or incorporate. Yes. Um, so the significance for us was we made a collective uh, intention and the intention was to really bring back the healing essence of the divine feminine and to facilitate the resurgence of equality and flourishing on the island once again, because of the, the rise of the divine feminine and that she could rise in equality with the divine masculine. And that was our intention on, on, on the journey. And my personal intention was to understand in some way. And I remember I was in the height of my corporate life at this time and I was quite burnt out. It was like, my personal intention was to try and understand my own personal gifts that I had, which were was a, a hands on healing gift I had discovered at 14 really randomly. Uh, it wasn't anything I was used to in my family or language I was used to. I didn't know what it was, but I discovered a very powerful healing ability that seemed to be just innate. Mm. And then poetry. So at 14, I discovered poetry and the hands on healing. So my personal very intent... Bridget, very Bridget. <laughs> and at that stage, I didn't know anything about Bridget, really, apart from the Bridget's cross. We weren't ta taught, you know, but yet that was my personal intention. And it was on on, I think, on the first day that Dolores was talking about Bridget's aspects and she said, you know, she was a healer and she was a goddess of poets. And I was like, 
Wow, there's there's never any coincidences no. when you're guided by your heart. Um, so then about so I got a thorn in my foot, like on pilgrimage. These challenges tend to happen, but they're always again for a reason. And Karen actually suggested that I take note of what tree the thorn was from, but it was actually from a hazel tree. We had all stopped for a break under the hazel tree and I had taken off my shoes to ground and then I got a thorn. But anyway, I kept walking with the thorn right on the sole of my foot yeah. for three days. Um, and on the third day, we ended up on the Hill of Slain um, and there was a fire prepared for us to light in ceremony um, and uh, a, a man who's now a friend of mine Enda um, he was there with his drum he's like a guardian of that site a, a steward of the site and he was there bringing us into ceremony and he lit the fire with Karen and Dolores and then he started to drum and then I just went into this really deep mystical state but it wasn't all unicorns and fairies. It was like very uncomfortable. I thought I was going to vomit. I lost my hearing. I couldn't see, lost all sense of bodily control. I just felt like I was being sucked into the land. Um, and we were all guided to say something and I didn't really know what or like, and I couldn't articulate anything. All I could articulate was, um, a mantra from Maud Gone, who is poet W.B. Yeats's uh, Unrequited Love, but she was actually like Ireland's greatest humanitarian and she was pivotal in the winning of Irish independence. Wow. Um, yeah, and very, she, her patron was Bridget. So Bridget empowered her work as the saint and as the goddess. So, but anyway, I wasn't thinking of any of this. I didn't actually probably know much of this at the time, but <laughs> what came through was her magical motto, which was through fire to the light. And that's all I could say. I didn't know why I was saying it, but the more I was saying it, then the better I started to feel. So I'm like, okay, I, I kept repeating it as an incantation. And then, um, I started to finally feel better. And then the whole ceremony was over. And I could see this beam of light coming through an aperture in the trees, which was weird because it was a different aperture than the sun was coming in. It was like because of the smoke, you could see the, the beam. Wow. And I got up and then I was like, oh, my God, this beam of light was coming right through where I was sitting and then into the fire. Like, so it was like what I said was kind of like it nature enacted what what I was saying unbeknownst to myself and I actually I, I I captured it I put the Bridget's cross in the beam of light to capture it on my phone and another woman caught the the whole picture so the picture is actually available to see it's 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 incredible but then as soon as that happened and as soon as I put Bridget's cross in the beam of light I felt this illumination that came from absolutely nowhere so you have to remember I was in the depths of the really dark deep discomfort then this illumination and then like all this joy and a sense of ease I couldn't feel the thorn in my foot which was like a deep source of suffering and then poetry started to flow like from nowhere and uh, then I walked back down the hill no bother total ease and I was just blown away by the happening. And then when we were dining that evening, the Druid Emer Burke, um, she she said, that sounds like Imbus for Osne, because I described the whole thing. And I'm like, well, I never heard of Imbus no. for <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, not many people have, because it's something that was forcibly removed from our memory. St. Patrick actually banned it he outlawed it uh, in around 433 AD and because Imbus for Osne is it means it's an ancient Irish term for divine illumination or divine inspiration or sacred wisdom and the Philly the poets of ancient Ireland who were equal importance to the king they used to use the practice of Imbus for Osne which was like a yogic practice to draw down wisdom into their beings um, so that they could speak truth to power and bring healing to society. And then St. Patrick banned it because it was a source of power. Yeah, you know, wisdom, yeah. 
that's it it was a direct source to the divine and in the catholic church they say you need an intermediary you know you need the the gatekeeper of the priest or whatever so it was banned and it was all but written out of history wow. now there are remnants of it in our mythology and but very like we have what's called the salmon of knowledge yeah and uh even the english translation of that it's it's not the salmon of knowledge really what it is is a salmon of imbus so imbus is much more than just knowledge imbus is like an omniscient sense of oneness or knowing and so very little remains um of it in our history and i knew at that moment with the intention that we had set for a collective healing of the divine feminine the personal intention of of you know understanding what i was to do with my poetry and healing and then my my 10 years at that stage of communications experience i was to somehow play my part in the remembrance and the revival of this ancient gift of of the irish wisdom tradition wow. so that's you know that's <laughs> what you do yeah. yeah and and you and you put, brought it into practice because you you were one of the people who helped putting uh, St. Bridget Day as the National Feast Day, is that right? It is, and I'm just having goosebumps here because I read somewhere after that it takes seven years to integrate a pilgrimage experience. And I think it was on the eighth year that the it just started like kind of consciousness around Bridget really started to come back into the fore in Ireland. And, um, the mother and baby home scandal. So um, from 1922 to 1998, when the Catholic Church uh, became so powerful in Ireland, um, church and state merged and the Catholic Church basically made our constitution. And right at that point, uh, women who got pregnant outside of marriage were shunned and stigmatized and uh, incarcerated in awful institutions where they were forcibly removed from their children who were either trafficked or adopted out. They were forced to do uh, slave unpaid labor up until nine months and yeah, it was horrendous. But my mother actually found herself pregnant at 17 and she was put into one of these mother and baby homes. Um, and uh, in 2021, it just so happened that uh, the our government apologized for this scandal in Irish history. Um, and his apology was very welcome, but it was tinged with some mistruths, which were very important. Basically, he defected blame. He, he blamed Irish society instead of rightfully putting the blame on, on the Catholic Church mm. and society. And, I mean, it, or the Catholic Church and the state and this something rose in me, you know, I, I just couldn't accept that. And I was debilitated at the time with Lyme disease. I was cognitively and physically bedridden for a year. So this this is at the same time. But I knew my healing would be impacted if I carried this intergenerational trauma in my body and this sense of anger. So. I wasn't even able to write a text to my friends at the time. I had kind of lost contact with my friends because I just didn't have energy. Mm. And I started to write what I thought was going to be a, a social media post and understanding that this is going to, I'm going to be like fit for nothing for about two weeks after this, because anytime you use energy when you're debilitated with Lyme, you have post exertion malaise for a long time after, but I thought it was good. It was better to get this out and, and because, you yeah. know, in terms of healing. So anyway, as I was writing in the state of mental debilitation, uh, because Lyme literally infects your brain, you know, it's it's scary. It's awful. Yeah, oh, it's it is a hellish experience. It was an initiatory experience, but that's another story which I would be going into at the conference. But um, this letter started to write itself literally in a in flow state because imbus ferocine in modern terms could be considered flow state 
So next thing I thought I was writing this uh, social media post just to outline the mistruths and, and the damage that that was going to cause and calling the government to account. And next thing, this letter, which ended up to be a 12 minute letter to our prime minister, an open letter to our prime minister wrote itself. And it was like the most coherent thing I'd ever written in my <laughs> years of corporate world. It was like all this history, these dots that I, that I joined in Irish history that actually hadn't been joined in that way before because I was speaking as someone intergenerationally who was directly affected by the oppression of the feminine and it was the 21st of January when the Taoiseach when our Prime Minister apologized which is very close to Bridget's day and then as I finished the letter it just like it just came to me out of nowhere as as the final kind of uh, solution or the final uh, request for some form of healing or a commitment to the government on the importance of equality, that we would actually mark Bridget's Day as a bank holiday, as a national holiday in Ireland. <laughs> came out of it. Yeah, and the letter like got covered by the national media, it got covered by international media, it did the rounds on social media, online. I was invited by our national theatre, the Abbey Theatre, which was set up by WB Yeats and Maud Gon. And think of the Maud Gon connection in 2013. I was invite the, invited by the Abbey to read it, you know, which was such a, such a cathartic moment in Irish history because the women of the mother and baby homes, they never spoke about it. Like the reason I felt responsible to speak about it was because I was not going to be re-traumatized by speaking about it because I was slightly removed, mm -hmm. but they were silenced and they were shunned. So it was like there was this energy caught in our collective Boy. woman in Ireland. And then I ended up to be the, a person on, on our national stage speaking of you know speaking what had been silenced for a hundred years and the healing that the healing that just and of course i used the opportunity for some alchemical healing work in, in as well you know um and yeah it just so much arose from that. and then two years i think later um bridget's day became a, a national holiday you know and um it just there's a direct correlation back to 2013 and us walking Bridget's Way. Um, and actually a few months after Bridget's Way was walked, the Taoiseach apologized for the Magdalene Laundries, which were another set of institutions similar to the mother and baby homes. So it's like, this, it can't be a coincidence that the through line connects everything, you know, and, and yeah, I'm just so, so grateful that it was so clear to me what I was to, to, how I was to conduct myself. And at the most disempowered part of my life with the line was actually the, the, the time that most empowerment came through. It's interesting. My journey was a bit like that. I was flattened by a hernia and all my priestess work and my being has come from that period. It's, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah. It's almost like, and if you think of the dynamics of the goddess, you know, the dark aspect of the goddess, it's 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 it has to be really broken down and then the new can come in. But yeah. also what you what you're telling is like, you know, I I don't know, I you can imagine I'm a big fan, even of you know, Brid Saint Bridget, and I see her very different than she is depicted often as the church. I see her as a quite a feisty. She must have been quite a feisty woman, you know, and not not taking any nonsense. And but also she was very much, uh, you know, standing up for women's rights and and you know looking after women. And uh, so I think you know that is so what you have done and what you have guided to do is so for me in the energy of also Saint Bridget. You know, is that. Uh, Goddess Bridget, yes, you know, and very inspired. But I always feel that those two are so interlinked with each other. So, uh, yeah. God, that's such an inspiring story. <laughs> I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> Beautiful. 
So mm -hmm. you you will be uh, you will be talking about uh, Imbus. Uh, I can't say it in here. Imbus. Imbus for all snake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you will be talking about it in the conference about your own story, and also you will do a workshop uh, to give an experience of how can I see that. Yes, yes. Uh, the talk will be an extension of what everything I've just spoken about and more about the experience of the descent into the dark. And I actually, my life since 2013, I've had three initiations um, through embodying three different goddesses, starting with Bridget, then with Bowen and then with Danu and wow. each of them had a physical challenge uh, me with Lyme my son nearly dying with sepsis and and then the thorn in the foot with with Bridget but each of them had a gift uh, you know uh, obviously Imbus on on Bridget's way and then love with Bowen and um healing then with Danu as well but um, I'll be speaking more into that on the talk and more about the so much more magic as well as Bridget's day coming into fruition that, that that's happened since. Mm -hmm. um, and also about the connection that I see between Slane and Glastonbury. So Sl the Hill of Slane, which is the point that which I ex the fire was lit yeah. on, on, on Bridget's way um is the point at which the feminine ley line of ireland called bridget's way which is the one we walked intersects with the masculine line which some people call the patrick line or some people call the Lou line so you know the god Lou as well yeah. um, and the intersection point of those two ley lines is right on the hill of slain so to me, it feels very similar to the Michael and Mary line in Glastonbury and how the tour um, is there as well, because there's also a church built on the Hill of Slain and like a, a more modern mm -hmm. uh, building, so to speak. And there is I've seen and felt many connections between Mary Magdalene and Bridget, and I'm sure you're aware. Yeah. Of, you're aware of. Yeah, and also through my students, it happens all the time that there is a connection with either with Mary Magdalene or with Freya, which is a different. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, so that's an interesting. Uh, yeah, but Mary Magdalene often and in the, we have Bride's Mount here in in uh, in Glastonbury, and, and there was a Mary a, a Magdalene Chapel on that as well. So uh, yeah, so there's yeah, there's loads of these things are yeah intertwined with each other. <laughs> is so much to discover I think that's available that will come through many of us and will no doubt come through at the goddess conference because like Bridget the etymology of the word Bridget means exalted one and so does Mary means exalted one and I see Imbus for Osne, Br Bridget was the goddess of Imbus for Osne. So Bridget was she who bestowed Imbus upon the worthy poets mm. and upon the kings. And Mary Magdalene then in her teachings has Gnosis. And I think Gnosis and Imbus for Osne are very similar. And, you know, it's obviously said that Mary Magdalene and, and her kin went to Glastonbury and went to the Druidic Isles after the crucifixion, yeah. I believe because the Essene wisdom of Gnosis and all of that was so similar and connected to the Druidic teachings. Um, so I think there's something about uh, slain in Ireland mm -hmm. and the correlation then between Glastonbury. And that's why I'm like, this is so incredible that I'm given the opportunity to bring, literally bring the fire of slain over to Glastonbury uh, and offer it. So excited. <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. And what's even more amazing is when Patrick banned Imbus for Osne and he banished the snakes from Ireland. So that's what he's said to have done, banished the snakes. Well, that's banished the goddess energy, banished the druidic serpentine kundalini fire, you know, tried to suppress it. But it's natural. You can't ban what's natural. But the place he in Ireland that he declared the death of our goddess ways, the death of our pa pagan ways and the birth of Christianity, he lit a fire, the Paschal fire, 
on the hill of Slain on Equinox in 433 AD. And I only found out later from my friend Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland that the fire he lit to, to banish the snakes and banish Imbus was this exact spot to the like foot that I experienced Imbus for Osne in 2013. Wow. So, yeah, that can't, can't be an accident. And no. my sense is that Patrick, he, like historically, he is said to have gotten on quite well with the Druids at the time. Mm. And to me, I feel like he was almost infiltrating and knew their power and actually maybe harnessed their power and beliefs because he lit the Paschal fire on Equinox, on the Vernal Equinox. Oh, yeah, mm. of course. But the church knows all these things, you know, it's, uh, yeah. It's, they have, like in a very Roman way, they have incorporated all these things, you know, and they, they were there before and they yeah. they have used it. But uh, we can we can reclaim it back. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. We're reclaiming. And I've actually felt the support of St. Patrick, which is funny. You know, you'd think he'd be my public enemy number one, which <laughs> he is in one regard. But I, it's like there's something in him trying to make amends or... You know, just as Judas had his own divine role to play, I'm sure Patrick, you know, I mean, he yeah. was a slave himself, so he would have. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. It's also, that's also, it's, it's interesting to, to go, you know, to feel back into those times because, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not the times that we are in now. So, yeah, there's so many things. Uh, yeah, there's so many things to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think we're going to leave it here because I mean we I think we can have an all day conversation if it goes on like this, <laughs> and I'm sure and I'm sure we will and and yes and I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, yeah to connect more deeply in person in Glastonbury this year at the Congress Conference and to mm-hmm. hear more about your story and to absorb your wisdom as well. So thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much, Marion. It's going to be an honor. I'm I'm really looking forward to connecting with you all. Yes, me too. Thank Take you. care. Bye. So bye bye. This interview was conducted by Marion Brigantia. Join us this year for the 29th Glastonbury Goddess Conference. A joyful gathering of goddess loving people. A six day in person event in Glastonbury Avalon running from Tuesday 30th of July to Sunday 4th of August 2024, with the Fringe event starting from Sunday 28th of July. This year the theme is the Goddess of Healing. It's our maiden year, the first of a new five-year cycle. International presenters, transformative workshops and experiences, deep ceremonies on the sacred land of Avalon, community, art, fun and love for goddess let your healing journey begin this year join us for the glastonbury goddess conference goddess of healing there are so many options to participate full conference tickets weekend tickets day tickets find what suits you best and get your ticket now at goddessconference.com blessed be